Hi everyone, my name is Sydney and today we are going to be discussing the last book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, Kingdom of Ash. This book is massive, it's about a thousand pages and I literally feel like I've been reading it for the entirety of 2019. Whilst reading it I would either be really super interested or get to a point where I would just like that I would have to put it down for a little bit because it was very overwhelming or I wasn't feeling it with some characters but oh my god there is so much to talk about within this book that it is insane. I can't believe what we've gone through within every single book of hers within this series, how many characters we have met, how many characters we have grown to love, you know, just to see how this story has unfolded and how it has ended. We are at the end of 2019 um, and you might be watching this video now in 2020, but it is an end of a decade. I am actually really happy that this is the last book that I've read in 2019 but also for this to be the last book that I've read within the end of this decade. It's really special because it's such a mammoth of a book, but also because of the ride that we have been on. If you have not read this series, I highly recommend that you do. It is so awesome. There are so many characters that you will love and I feel like anyone would love this story because it's so cool with the amount of magic that's involved, the assassin, kick-ass action. It reminds me very much so to Harry Potter and also Game of Thrones. But I don't want to go into any more detail about it because I think if you're interested you should just go pick up the books yourself and read them. Okay, I think I'm just going to go into the spoilery section because there's so much I need to talk about and I feel like I've been blabbing on for too long now so here we go <laughs> in three two one so we start off this book with Aileen being held captive by Maeve and she's being tortured by Khan being tortured by Maeve I really think that Khan was raping her because the way that she was reacting afterwards it just really felt like they had hit something in her that was so deep she had to rediscover herself again to refine her confidence it was really interesting because with my mindset being in that headspace when Rowan came and Aileen was able to escape. When Rowan was able to avenge her by giving the torture right back to Khan, it made it even more so bittersweet. It made it even more grand. Also, finding out that Yurene is pregnant. Oh my god, what bad fucking timing. Just to read that and to know what they have ahead of them was like, oh fuck girl, good luck. But Yurene, honestly was one of my favorite characters in this entire book. Just her growth, especially within the, the book Tower of Dawn, was incredible. Fucking having something within her growing, being able to do all that she did was insane. My other favorite character within this story was Fenris. I completely fell in love with Fenris, which was so interesting because within the other books I really I honestly forgot about Fenris, I didn't pay much attention to him, but in this book the friendship built between him and Aileen was just so beautiful. They didn't need to use their voices to speak to each other. They knew what each other had gone through and with the whole thing of Khan torturing Aileen, Fenris was there the whole time by her side. At the end of this book, Aileen being there for Fenris, reminding him that she's there, was really beautiful and that was a moment within many other moments where I felt myself tearing up. Something that was really cool within this book was Dorian. Dorian to me was the ultimate hero. Yurene also, but Dorian was the ultimate hero. The fact that Dorian was able to learn how to shapeshift was really freaking cool. Especially at the end, him shapeshifting into Yurene in front of Erewhon was probably one of the highlights of his shapeshifting moments. One of my favorite moments in this entire book was when Dorian came back to Aileen to the rest of the court and Aileen could sense what he held in his palm. The three wide keys. That was a moment of 
heaviness building, you know, because we are about to finally have this final wall. And he's got the three wild keys. What are they going to do next? That was fucking awesome. You already know this if you've been following my journey with these books, how much I love Dorian. And for him to be the one who had found the last key, I honestly would not have wanted anyone else to have done it. So there was a big thought that I had whilst reading this book. Um, Lysandra obviously is, we know her as a shapeshifter. And there was a moment, I think earlier on in this book, where Lysandra she gave herself up, she sacrificed herself in a moment. And there was a part of me that was just thinking, why didn't Lysandra learn how to shapeshift into a dragon or something? Because we obviously know that against Valg, fire is the biggest element that can, that can help them win. And I was just thinking, if that was a thing, that would have been fucking awesome. But then maybe the story would have been too easy, I understand that. Like, this is a world that is built around fantasy, right? Surely there are dragons somewhere <laughs> that she could have learned how to shapeshift into one. So, obviously, with Aileen escaping Khan and Maeve, she had lost everything. She had lost her magic, her fire. She had to retrain herself. And it was honestly devastating to read because your mindset goes straight to they are in deep shit. How the fuck are they going to win this war with no fire, which is the main element for them to win. And I honestly, I didn't think they would succeed, but I will talk more about that as this video goes on. Obviously, whilst reading this book, there are many things I loved and there are moments that I will hold forever, but I, there are definitely a lot of cons to this book. The biggest thing that I am heavily disappointed with that didn't happen in this book is the match, the big one between Manon and her grandmother. Of course, we did get some kind of duel, but oh my god, I was craving so much more. Manon ended up being the queen of all witches, and she deserves that. But, oh my god, her grandmother fucking cowered away. She ran away. <sighs> Honestly, that's the biggest thing I'm heavily disappointed with. But from saying that, let's go into, honestly, my favourite part of this book. All that we are thinking before the dam breaks is a lead getting to Lorcan before it does. That whole scene honestly had me on the edge of my seat that I, just thinking about it, I have goosebumps. A lead riding cow's horse for Asha, trying to get to Lorcan, and she does, what the hell, she does get to Lorcan, but her having to go back to the gate, it felt like eternity of her getting to him and her getting back, for them to hold the gate for her and him. It was really scary, and honestly, this was a moment that I can see on screens. I can see this with my eyes. All of us readers, we were on that fucking horse with the lead. And also to have Aileen there saving her army with the fire that she had been creating deep inside of her for the amount of time of her being captive to then. Wow. The way that Aileen erupted with fire. For it to have happened here was really amazing. Because Aileen is very strategic, so for her to have used it then, it was like she knew she had to store this fire and get it growing for this moment. So I definitely think I'm not the only one who did end up disliking Adian. Just how he treated Lysandra was shit pushing her into the snow. I don't know, I felt like their relationship was really weird and kind of unnecessary. I don't think they should have ended up together. And Gavriel, Adian's father. So this is another con. <laughs> um, so Gavriel sacrificed himself. It was really unnecessary. Like, he just found Adian again and was saying, we can finally live the life we've always wanted, you know, I'm here for you, blah, 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 blah. 
and then sacrifices himself, but he didn't need to sacrifice himself. It was just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, so that was really stupid. Okay, okay, so I might get some hate for saying this. You probably know this about me. I weirdly end up loving the villains in stories. I don't know what it is. But there's something about villains that just makes me laugh my ass off or there's something about them that I'm like, I end up getting really interested in their story. When it came down to Dorian having to align with Maeve, I actually started to like her. And I know that might be really weird. I'm probably the only one who thinks that. Probably everyone else is like, Dorian, get the fuck out of there. There was something about her that I kind of felt like I saw a softer side. And I was wondering, actually, if they were actually going to let her live and somehow she would change to be on their side. I don't know. The fact that Dorian, he finally got the last white key. Bless his soul. I love him. He removed it from Kaltain and poor girl, oh my god, removed the last one from her arm. And she was begging him to kill her. The fact that Maeve, she actually was the one who, without a second thought, Maeve did it for him. And she said, consider it a wedding gift. That in itself was kind of a beautiful moment. The most brutal part of this story was the 13 sacrificing themselves. That was really hard to read. The flowers in the field, the spot where it happened. And having that happen right after we are in shock about Abraxas, Manon's wyvern, thinking that he's going to die. That was honestly the death that shook me. And I think it shook a lot of people whilst reading this. Because obviously while you're reading it, you're mainly thinking which main character is going to die. And that's another con for me within this story that we got, and I'm sorry, but it's so true, we got so many cop-outs. So many cop-outs. Aileen, honestly, there were so many times where she cheated death. And I honestly think that it got to the point that it was kind of ridiculous. So for this to have been the major death that we had seen in this book was really devastating. For them to have done this for Manon, for them to have done it to save everyone was a really beautiful heroic act. A beautiful moment as well was when Dorian and Cal met again for the first time in bloody forever. That was so beautiful. Oh my heart, my heart is going mush mush. Okay, this is another issue I had with this story. So obviously within the last book we read before, Kingdom of Ash, we realized just how strong Dorian's powers are, right? And there was a moment between Dorian and Aileen where they fused their powers together and there was something unlike anything we've ever seen between them unfold in that moment. So I don't know why we didn't consider that or use more of that as this story went on. I was glad that it kind of came up when Rowan was like, I've never seen anything like that. Why don't you both forge the lock together? So that was pretty cool. But then they didn't even end up having to fully use Dorian because then his father was there and honestly the whole thing with his father being there was really fucking weird. I don't know, it was weird to me. Nameless is my price. That whole thing was really weird. And then Dorian like going back to reality and not even having been part of that whole thing. But also again within that section, Aileen cheated death. She ended up removing all of the gods. That was fucking crazy. I mean, it was still really cool, and the lock itself was the Eye of Elena. That was really freaking cool. But I wanted them to fuse their powers together in a different way. Like, I wish that had happened at the end of this book. So, yes, how they won was really interesting that Aileen had nothing left in terms of power, and she was the only one who knew that. It was really difficult to read because it was like, oh my fucking god, you have no fucking power left. They are fucked. Apparently they weren't in the end, but yes. Erwin going up to see the healers and then that whole thing with Dorian and Yurine, that was a really cool moment. But also, why the fuck would Dorian in that moment be like, 
Tell me my father's name. Like, Yurene is putting so much fucking energy and work right now. She's sweating balls, right? And Dorian has to, has to freaking ask this question. Like, really? Really? No one gives a shit. But anyway, and then we find out that his name is Dorian. Like, really? Really? This book, it was definitely like this for me. And then coming to the end was like, ah, uh, you know? I would have loved to have known if Yoreen ended up healing um, Elite's foot. Also, the relationship between Manon and Dorian, how that ended up unfolding, would have been really interesting to have seen because they were very standoffish with each other at the end. Yeah, there were a few questions unanswered, but maybe we will get them answered somehow. I don't know. So, um,. Yeah, that's all my thoughts on Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. And I'm honestly, I'm feeling quite sad that this is the end. This series was incredible and I love fantasy, I love magic. So being able to be within this world and having this book as the last that I had read of this year was really special. But in saying that, of course, there were issues within this book that I had and I kind of wish that it went in a different way. I'm still really grateful to have read it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you guys in my next video, which will probably be in the new year 2020. So see you then as usual. Bye!